Now we will proceed with our next question. Senator Pia, your five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I will actually pursue the line of questioning um, right now. Um, to Honorable Iqbal, um, sir, and actually, may I may I um, address my questions to Honorable Iqbal and the Peace Panel, no, and any one of um, Professor Ferrer or Secretary Deles. Going back to the 24-hour requirement, um, your position is the exemption to the 24 requirement simply means less than 24 hours. So you stand by the fact that to pursue a international fugitive, the exemption was not made to allow the operations to go smoothly, but simply to coordinate with less time? That is the exception you are making? Would I request my counterpart to answer? Again, if we read the text, it says, Adjag shall inform CCCH. Adjag is made up of both government and MILF. Mm. If it is a high-value target, they are exempted. But it means also that Adjag already knows. When it will inform the CCCH, that's the, that's the question. Because uh, that's already tactical level. I think, uh, so, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, we have never had the chance to present the whole mechanism. Can we be given a few moments to make a presentation of uh, the procedure and also to, to highlight to you some of the, import, the cases where effective law enforcement was undertaken with proper coordination. Ma'am, please submit your presentation to us. I think we, we requested for whatever information you may have so that it would have been included in our questions also. But we have already provided you with all the documents and it would seem that there is misinterpretation of uh, of this particular provision. Well, you can, uh, ma'am, you can go ahead and answer the questions. You can cite from what would have been in your presentation. The important thing is also that this is not just about the BBL. This is also about the SAF. That's why we, we gave you also your time to, to explain your side. On the other hand, we will be asking for a copy of your presentation. Well, then, uh, Madam Chair, what I can say is that operationally, that is the rule, and that is why we have these standing protocols in this instance, it was the decision of those who planned the operation not to follow the protocol. Senator P, are you satisfied with that answer? Do you need well, more? Well, actually, my question is, um, let, let me rephrase that. How, did you, how would you envision this scenario to play out? And I would like um, Chairman Iqbal to also answer. How do you envision the scenario to play out if, in fact, notice was given? How would it play out? And the reason why it is important for me to hear from Mr. Iqbal is because malaman ho natin kung sa pananaw nyo, paano mangyayari po yun. Uh, lilisanin po yun ng mga civilians doon. Uh, tahimik lang po ang mga MI, nakaibigan naman po ni Marwan. Paano ho mangyayari yun? Kung na nakapagbigay nga ho ng notice, please enlighten us kasi hindi ko po maintindihan. Sa nakikita natin ngayon eh, parang may, ano, <coughs> Ang, ang lumalabas, walang tiwala. Sinasabi ko po kanina, umusad po yung pag-uusap ng gumiran sa KMLM dahil po may tiwala sa bawat isa. Dito sa ceasefire implementation, dun sa adyag na mekanismo, kailangan din po na may tiwala. Dahil po sa may tiwala, makikita natin sa record, success stories, ng uh, adyag na gobyerno at saka adyag ng MILF, malaki po, marami po silang nagawa. Pero, noong hindi na mangyari yung uh, coordination, kaya nangyari yung, yung January 25 po. So, kailangan po natin ng coordination and then kailangan natin magtiwala sa bawat isa. Kasi pag wala tayo yung tiwala sa isa't isa, well, there is no sense talking to each other. O, oh, ang ibig nyo po sabihin, kasi ang hiningi ko po sana sa inyo yung scenario, no? But, hindi ako sinasagot ng derecho. Um, so, I'm just assuming ngayon na sabi nyo dapat may tiwala. So, bahala na. Basta let's follow the rules and bahala na magtiwala lang po tayo. Yun ho ba? Hindi ho ganun. Kaya nga, ang, 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 ang sinasabi ko po, yun nga, hinihingi po ng counterpart ko na may presenta po natin, namin, yung paano yung proseso para doon po makita na klaro. Kasi pag ganito lang ho, palagi ko mahirapan tayo intindi. Kasi proseso po yan. Proseso and then meron dyang activity sa ground na kailangan matingnan din natin. Idea? 
process, kailangan doon sa implementation, paano bang, ano, paano bang gumalaw? Doon natin makikita yan. Kaya siguro, yung mga adyag ng gobyerno sa KMILED, wala rito yung uh, adyag namin kasi may sakit na sa ospital, pero yung adyag ng gobyerno ng Pilipinas, palagay ko may, may illustrate nila kung paano ba yung dynamics, paano ba yung mekanismo. Kasi ho ako, I, I think some of my companions, nahirapan kami ma-visualize kung nagkaroon ng advance notice, paano lilisanin ang lugar na, nun, na yon nung mga civilians kung, um, at hindi mabibigyan ng impormasyon si Marwan who is living in peace in that area. Sabi nga po ni Senator Alan, hindi naman siguro magtatago ang isang mil, somebody with millions of dollars on his head in a place na alam niyang kaliwat kanan eh, merong magbubulgar nung hiding place niya. So, we're just trying to understand papaano ito mangyayari. Um, anyone else in the peace panel want to help me understand? Because if not, I will make some assumptions and I will continue my questions. Um, Ma'am, ang uh, ano po namin, uh, sometimes, uh, kung just in case na nagkakaroon ng ano, ng uh, early coordination, for example, in my case, or sa ADJAG, uh, kung nakita namin po na very critical at saka high value target yung ano po na yan, very limited time nang talaga ang uh, natin. Kung baga sa ano po, uh, ang coordination po natin, uh, yung sinasabi niyo po mag-evacuate ang civilian, we will not allow that. Yung precision, yung precision engagement ang kanon natin kasi eh. Kung nalaman namin yung ano, yung, yung ano, kung, kung pwede po after the fact na po kasi ito, kung nalaman po namin sana yung, yung operations na yon sa panel, kahit nasa amin lang, we can advise them where do we place yung mga blocking force na hindi matetreten ang MILF. That's one. Second, kung uh, mayroong early coordination, pwede kami mag-strategize na after getting Marwan, umakyat sila ng mataas na bundok, get a defensive position, and we will effect immediately the ceasefire. Third, Kung meron pong ka prior coordination, kahit na two, ano lang, uh, uh, two hours lang, basta kami ang maunang magbigay ng information do sa aming counterpart. Okay na po yun, ma'am. Ang mas mahirap, sila po ang mag unang magbigay ng information sa amin, nagbabakbaka na ang MILF at saka yung gobyerno. Kasi kung, uh, kung ganun po ang mangyayari, yung sinasabi ko pong instances na limited na lang, kahit na two hours or even 30 minutes, at least makapag ano ka po kami, makapag uh, mind mapping na kami kung sino yung kukontakin namin, kung sino yung pinaka-critical na may hold sa ground, na makukontrol niya yung tao niya. At the same time, sino yung pinaka-most influential na grupo na pwede niya i-control yung, yung ano, yung ano niya. Yun po ma'am ang, uh, ano, ang uh, nakikita natin. I believe walang leakage yun. Walang leakage sa, na, nagawa na po namin yun ma'am. Nagawa na po namin. Nagawa namin itong February 15, dito lang bago. Magawa, magagawa din po natin yan. Ang mahirap lang po, pati kami, hindi pinagkatiwala sa mechanics mo. Well, as to whether um, that scenario will result in life saves, I will leave that up to our law enforcers, the Secretary of DILG, to determine that in their own forum. Um, I just wanted to hear on record what it is because based on what you're saying, you will keep it as highly confidential as possible. But you did say you will decide kung sino yung mapapagkatiwalaan. And that's where I feel there may be a problem or serious concerns kasi precisely why my understanding is hindi matuloy-tuloy yung operations na to. Nakadalawang, nakadalawang failed ano na sila because of confidentiality. But that is just my perception. I will leave it at that. I will go back to Mr. Iqbal. Uh, your pardon, Your Honor. I... Hindi pa ho, inantay ko naman kayo. Um, so, ang next question ko po, nabanggit nyo kasi dun sa katanungan ko, yung sagot nyo was the importance of trust. Uh, and sabi nyo earlier, I was um, following the discussions with my colleagues. Ang sabi nyo, um, mahirap pagdamdamin ng tao. Ang, uh, damdamin ng tao, mahirap yan. And sabi nyo din, it takes so much political capital para isoli ang armas. Ang question ko po is, kung um, gamit pa lang ang pinag-uusapan natin, ang hir kayo na ho, you were very honest and I thank you for that. You were very candid, 
I appreciate that na sinasabi niyong mahirap pakiusapan itong mga to na nandiyan na, bitawan niyo yung armas, ibalik niyo. E paano pa ho yung encounter na sasabihin na lulusubin kayo, uh, hold back kayo, baka yung mga kamag-anap niyo madamay. And then, I'm talking about this encounter moving forward in the future pag pagka ang MILF eh nagkaayusan na po tayo pero alam natin po na maraming kamag-anak kaibigan na may iwan sa BIFF eh paano ho yung damdamin kasi as far as i know uh, ang ating um, armed forces and police pag sinabi ng mga commander nila tigil kayo atras kayo isurrender niyo yun. Sunod po sila. Unfortunately, whether they like it or not, isinasantabi nila yung damdamin. So, I guess yun po ang tanong ko po sa inyo. And again, I, I have so much uh, respect for your candidness. Pero yun po ang hinahanap natin na counterpart. Na kaya po ng high-level uh, officers ng MI to be able to tell their people na ito ang utos. Isurrender ang gamit tumabi kayo, pabayaan yung lumusob ang ating armed forces, ang ating police. Help us understand that because that is the dilemma we face now and we will continue to face in the future if mangingiral po ang damdamin. Which I feel is valid, no? but under the circumstances, we need to address it. Uh, siguro, Your Honor, kung titingnan natin ang mga dyaryo, hanggang ngayon, nandiyan pa rin ang ano eh. Nandiyan pa rin ang emotion, nandiyan pa rin ang outrages, dami po. So, ibig sabihin, hindi pa rin namamatay. Mas maputi pa nga ho, with your respect sa mga kaibigan natin na sa SAF, mas maputi pa nga ho yung, ano, yung pamilya ng mga SAF. Kasi meron silang mga bakte, meron silang tumutulong sa kanila. Sa amin wala. Sa amin wala. Hindi ho ba? So, ibig sabihin, ito at titingnan natin mga dyaryo ngayon. Hanggang ngayon, binubuhay pa rin yung ano. Kahit na yung mismong pamilya ng mga SAP na namatay, pinupuntahan pa rin ng ibang media para halungkatin yung damdamin nila. Halos, parang, parang ang pinapakita dyan na uh, yung, yung emotion ng tao, kailangan makita ng buong mundo na talagang ano. Unfortunately, I appreciate the issue of feelings, pero po hindi hu yun ang kailangan mangiral sa, sa, pa, sa panahon na ito. Ang, ang nais ko pong um, bigyan natin ng pansin is the fact that you're negotiating now and we need the confidence. Sabi nga ni Senator Marcos, confidence building tayo on the fact that, that BBL will be able to give us peace is that makontrol niyo po nga ang damdamin ng mga tao na nasa crowd. Kaya nga that, ho, that is the reality, sir. Kaya nga ho, kahit na mahirap, ginawa po namin na yung mga bagay na yan, as a, as a, as a symbolism, malaking symbolism po, gesture of goodwill, gesture of uh, reconciliation, na may balik po. Kasi ang tingin na, ang, ang aming pananaw, Uh, although talaga masakit yung nangyari, pero mas importante itong malaking bagay na magkaroon po tayo ng kapayapaan sa Mindanao. Dahil pag dyan lang ang ipupuntirya po natin yung nangyari, although masakit talaga on both sides, eh baka lalong mas malaki pang problema ang harapin natin. Kaya, importante dito on both sides, kailangan po, ano, isusulong po natin ang kapayapaan. Kasi pag hindi natin isusulong ito at uh, hindi mangyari yung tunay na kapayapaan, eh, mas malaki pang problema namin, natin sa hinaharap. I'm sure I was given a piece of paper that said my five minutes is up. So can I just end to respond um, to what uh, Chairman Iqbal Go said? Ahead, no? um, I, I have here photocopies of, uh, well, just I've, I'm sure you've seen all of this. Just photocopy, downloaded, um, articles of the news on the uh, 16 firearms recovered and I was monitoring your response to Senator Marcos' line of questioning at sinabi niyo nga po symbolic gesture. Um, I, I must say that there's something wrong here, sir, kasi yung symbolic gesture na sinasabi niyo, eh, and, and before I continue, yung symbolic gesture na binanggit niyo po, in all these articles I've read, and forgive me if I've not read every one, pero mga anim ho to, All the officers here present, even those from the peace panel, all, everyone here has um, high praises 
and said that this is a step in the right direction. Katulad po yun, nagkakaisa po kayo dyan. Tanging si General Espina lang ang nagsabi na we expect um, more to be surrendered and that all the personal belongings shall be returned to us, uniforms and all belonging to our fallen heroes. Except for that statement, which I feel he still structured in a very politically correct way, so as not to hurt the MILF, everyone else just had high praises for the gesture. I am not a military officer. I know nothing about guns. And kayo po, nanawagan kayo ng investigation, gano'n ho ba kahirap para tingnan lang ng isang expert kung talagang nakanibalize yan, hindi ho ba General Espina on the spot? You can have your experts look at it and say, wala ho yung scope dito, natanggal ho yung trigger dito, pinalitan ho ng alambre, ng, ng safety pin. You don't need an investigation for that. And you are accountable to our people, to the fallen 44, to these soldiers and their families, to tell them kung biro-biro lang naman yung gesture na yon. And if sa panahon na nyo, Mr. Iqbal, eh, on your part, good faith, then I acknowledge that and I appreciate that. But I need you to be able to say na babalikan ko tong lahat na to, sisiguraduhin ko, and, and aalamin ko kung ba't nila kayo binobola, bakit nila tayo binobola, dahil kayo ang nakaharap dyan, kayo ang kausap namin, na matino itong binalik niyong 16, kahit na as far as I know, arithmetic nga lang naman po, pero kulang na kulang yung 16 out of 60 ba yun? 60 plus? 46, something like that. So sa numbers pa lang kulang, on the cannibalization, you don't need an investigation. So I rest my case, but maybe a quick response for from uh, General Espina on this because it's been, the, the ceremony was Feb 18 ba or Feb 19, the turnover. So uh, what, it's been six days? <coughs> I mean, this means a lot to the families of the soldiers and I'm sure to every officer here whose people lost, who, whose, whose equipment they've lost. Aside from the personal belongings, we can't sweep it under the rug, which we are doing as we wait every single day for such an investigation or further, further, um, further return of for more equipment. Nasa na ba to? Nag-alisa na ba sa Pilipinas? Bakit abutin pa ng sham sham? So, I go back to your answer. Damdamin nga siguro, but then where is the leadership po? With all due respect, kailangan ho natin panindigan yan. Kasi paano ho tayo magmo-move forward sa decommissioning kung ito hindi natin mabalik 40 plus pieces lang. Paano pa ah, yung ninyo, hundreds of arms respect, na nakatago ah. sa ilalim ng bahay, sa likod ng pintuan? Paano ko pa ho ibabalik yun? E sabi nyo nga ho, these are, uh, what was the term, um, spoils of war. Sinabi nyo po yun kanina. So in plain military ka, parlance, in pure military parlance, inkwentro po yun eh. Pero babalikan ko yung armas po. Alam po niyo yung inkwentro na yan nangyari sa isang lugar, isang community na maraming grupo doon. At least three or four groups na yun nandun doon. Yung BIFF, MILF, Private Army, na alam, na, alam naman natin kung kanino yan. Ang apat, kasi pag may inkwentro, kahit, kahit na yung mga sibilan, sumasama. Yung BIFF, sinasabi nila... Sir, uh, nabanggit po ninyo, kanino po yung Private Army? Hindi po hindi namin... Po, na I cannot uh, say it open, your, your honor. Bakit po? Is it national security? Hindi naman ho, pero I do not want to create a social problem on the ground. Maybe in private I can tell, tell you. Okay, that would be acceptable. Please finish your answer, sir. Bakit may kinikwento po kayo, di ba? Oh, yun, yun ka. Apat ng grupo nang dyan, MILF, it's a community, MILF, BIFF, private army na yan, tapos yung mga sibilyan. Yung mga sibilyan, kung pagkatapos ng, ano, pagkatapos ng pagbakang ganyan, kasama sila naghanap ng armas. And then yung BIFF, sabi nila, ang na, na, nakuha nilang armas, sampo, kasama B90. In one interview of their spokesman, uh, Abu Misri. So, yun po, yun, yung armas na yan, doon napunta po doon sa apat na grupo na yan. Pero sa amin, sinabi ko doon sa kamsyong ko, awang, sa datuling sinuswat, na hindi namin sinasabi na ito na lang nakuha ng MILF. Pero hahanapin po namin at kung meron pa kaming makita, isasoloy pa rin namin. Hindi especially yung, ano, yung mga personal effects. Pero eh, sa tingin ko, ha, ha, wala na kaming mahanap. Maliban lang sa isa na we promise na ibibigay pa rin namin sa SAF. Well, siguro yung tungkol na lang sa cannibalization, balikan nyo na lang po kami dun sa incident na yon Kasi... 
hindi ho ako papayag na hindi hindi natin malaman ng punot dulo noon. Kasi hindi ako naniniwala na kailangan po ng another full investigation for that. Kasi alam po ninyo, yung paggalado ng armas, that was February 18, uh, noon lang namin nakita sa counterpart ko yung armas, doon sa Awang, Awang Airport. And then, uh, there was a sort of a validation. I don't know, was it the military or a representative of EPNP? But there was a validation, especially yung, ano, yung mga serial numbers. And then, no, habang nandudong kami, wala naman sinasabi sa amin na mayroong ininagatugma doon sa serial numbers na ibinigay ng PNP uh, sa CCCS ng MILF, CCCS ng Gobyerno ng Pilipinas. Doon lang namin nalaman na mayroong cannibalization na afterwards. Pero hindi ko naman sinasabi na yung sinasabi ng PNP ay eh, hindi tama. Kaya lang naman, pag uh, wala hong, ano independent investigation, it puts the MILF in a bad light. Kaya nga ako, although palagay natin, naniniwala kami sa sinasabi ng PNP, pero nahirapan po kami kung wala hong magsasabi na independent group na ito pala nakanibalize. So yun uh, hong ang punto namin. Uh, Senator Pia, I think uh, General Espina, you can provide us a copy of the inventory and your notations, observations, and the equipment that was submitted to you. And um, with regards to an independent body, sir, I think uh, we will also take into account in our committee report whatever is submitted uh, with regards to the equipment that was returned by the MILF. Um, Senator Pia? Well, Madam Chair, if I can just get a quick response from General Espina about it, because he, he was the only person I heard who furthered beyond just giving full praises for the return of uh, at least just one-third of the equipment. So can I just get your comments now, sir? Six days has passed, and how do you feel about this? We still await for the return of the others, despite the uh, declaration of uh, Chairman uh, Iqbal here. Uh, <clears throat> like to reiterate, hindi po inyo yon. Yung mga gamit, mga cellphone, mga personal belongings, they are ours. The uh, <coughs> firearms, they, these are ours. And uh, marami na po talagang napag-usapan yung still away for the return of these firearms. I'm sure just to end, um, yun nga, I express my grave concern that uh, when the chair said that these are considered spoils of war and ganito ang damdamin ng mga tao nila, paano nga tayo moving forward over all these years? Spoils of war siya. So magkakasulian ba tayo ng mga gamit na yan in the future? And, and whether we're talking about equipment, Kevlar helmet, bulletproof plates, magazines, uh, communication equipment, yun nga, yung personal belonging, damdamin din naman ng mga, ng mga sa families yun. So damdamin, kung damdamin lang ang pinag-uusapan, I would have thought na magkakaintindihan tayo dyan. Dahil you can say may pamilya din yung taong yan. Wala naman silang personal, personal affinity dun sa kinuha nilang cellphone or t-shirt man lang nung, nung SAF. So, you know, I, I, I cannot let this go because um, we can end this hearing but the families will forever pine away for these personal belongings. And then I believe that that is government property that must be returned in good faith. And the leadership must show that the leadership can account for that. Whether yung apat na factions, because moving forward in BBL, we're only talking to MILF. So how do we speak of peace in Mindanao if we will always hear e apat na grupo yan? Yung apat na grupo na yan will always be there. So yun lang, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Pia. Now we will proceed with our next question. Senator Pia, your five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I will actually pursue the line of questioning um, right now um, to Honorable Iqbal. Um, sir, and actually, may I, may I um, address my questions to Honorable Iqbal and the Peace Panel, no? and any one of um, Professor Ferrer or Secretary Deles. Going back to the 24-hour requirement, um, your position is the exemption to the 24 requirement simply means less than 24 hours. So you stand by the fact that to pursue a international fugitive, the exemption was not made to allow the operations to go smoothly, but simply to coordinate with less time? That is the exception you are making? 
Would I request my counterpart to answer? Again, if we read the text, it says, Adjag shall inform CCCH. Adjag is made up of both government and MILF. Mm. If it is a high-value target, they are exempted. But it means also that Adjag already knows. When it will inform the CCCH, that's the, that's the question. Because uh, that's already tactical level. Out. And the reason why it is important for me to hear from Mr. Iqbal is because malaman ho natin kung sa pananaw nyo, paano mangyayari po yun. Uh, lilisanin po yun ng mga civilians doon. Uh, tahimik lang po ang mga MI na kaibigan naman po ni Marwan. Paano ho mangyayari yun? Kung na nakapagbigay nga ho ng notice, please enlighten us kasi hindi ko po maintindihan. Sa nakikita natin ngayon eh, parang may, ano, <coughs> Ang, ang lumalabas, walang tiwala. Sinasabi ko po kanina, umusad po yung pag-uusap ng gobyerno sa KMLM dahil po may tiwala sa bawat isa. Dito sa ceasefire implementation, doon sa adyag na mekanismo, kailangan din po. I think, uh, so, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, we have never had the chance to present the whole mechanism. Can we be given a few moments to make a presentation of uh, the procedure and also to, to highlight to you some of the import the cases where effective law enforcement was undertaken with proper coordination. Ma'am, please submit your presentation to us. I think we, we requested for whatever information you may have so that it would have been included in our questions also. But we have already provided you with all the documents and it would seem that there is misinterpretation of uh, of this particular provision. Well, you can, uh, ma'am, you can go ahead and answer the questions. You can cite from what would have been in your presentation. The important thing is also that this is not just about the BBL. This is also about the SAF. That's why we, we gave you also your time to, to explain your side. On the other hand, we will be asking for a copy of your presentation. Well, then, uh, Madam Chair, what I can say is that operationally, that is the rule, and that is why we have these standing protocols in this instance, it was the decision of those who planned the operation not to follow the protocol. Senator Pia, are you satisfied with that answer? Do you need well, more? Well, actually, my question is, um, let, let me rephrase that. How, did you, how would you envision this scenario to play out? And I would like um, Chairman Iqbal to also answer. How do you envision the scenario to play out if, in fact, notice was given? How would it play out?